Hey everybody, this is Natsy Jones here. Thank you so much for visiting my channel. Listen, today we're going to talk about why you're experiencing no progress in your life. No matter how many goals you set, how many lists you make, it seems like you just can't get ahead. Well, there's a reason for that, especially if you consider yourself a believer, there's a system that you should be operating on that you might not be operating on. Just like if I spoke a different language, and I live in a country that doesn't speak my language, I'm gonna have a different experience. It's the same way. We are a part of a kingdom. There's a certain way that we're supposed to be living. There's a certain way that we're supposed to move, speak, and all of that. This channel is all about kingdom lifestyle. We need to get in alignment. So let's go through this. Now, first things first, if you're not experiencing progress in your life and you're setting goals and you're not able to achieve them and you're just getting burned out, Number one, you might be too busy. Now you are hearing this from a reformed busy bee. I was addicted to the do, as I used to say. I loved task lists, checking things off. I liked waking up and working until I was tired in the middle of the night. I was addicted to work because I believed that I was the reason that things were happening in my life. I believed that I had the power to make anything happen. It's true, grinding and working hard does have value, but in the kingdom system, there's a different way that we're supposed to operate. We're not supposed to just operate the way every other person in the world operates. We're supposed to be in a different system. So that means you can grind, 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 work, 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 work all you want. But if you're not aligned to God's will, you're wasting your time because you're in a different system system. That's like trying to take a toaster. You take a toaster and it works on the kitchen uh, counter, right? But if you take the, tank, the same toaster and you bring it into a pool of water, it's not going to work the same. It's a different environment. There are different rules to water than there are to air. You are in a different system, okay? So we're supposed to have peace, we're supposed to have priority, um, prioritize the things of God over other things. And we're not supposed to be anxious. The world shows us if you're anxious, if you're working hard, working your fingers to the bone, blood, sweat, and tears, you can achieve whatever it is that you want if you work hard enough. That is how the world operates. Yes, there's value in hard work, but there's not value in being too busy because if you're too busy, you can't hear from God. You're going to be anxious. You're going to be tired. And when you're tired, you don't think clearly. Let's slow down. Be still and know that God is God. Casting every care on him because he cares for you. Don't be too busy. In your pursuit, don't be too busy. Don't have too much on your plate. Reevaluate your plate and think, okay, what should be on here and what should not be on here? I need to have balance in my life. Am I spending time with God? Am I spending time with my children, my loved ones? If I'm too busy for that, then I'm out of alignment. Do not be too busy. That's number one. Number two, are you clear on what your goal really is? The Bible talks about counting up the cost. When you are setting yourself on the path to achieve anything, you need to be clear on what it is that you're doing. In one of my previous videos, I talked about how I categorized my uh, projects and my work into three different categories, my personal brand, nonprofit, and for-profit. How clear are you on what your purpose is? How clear are you on what your mission and your vision is that will move you towards your goal? you have to get clear. You know what helps getting clear? Not being too busy. If you are too busy, you will not get the clarity that you need because with busyness comes a lot of noise. It's just movement. Busyness is movement. It has no particular direction. It's just movement. Imagine a kid just spinning around in circles or running around in circles or pushing up against a brick wall. You're just breaking a sweat, but you're not getting anywhere. So that's busy. And then clarity. You have to know where you're going. You have to know exactly what it is that you're trying to do. Have you ever asked someone, what is it that you're really trying to do and watch them look lost? But mind you, they've been doing a whole bunch of stuff. But when you sit down and say, what is it that you're really trying to do here? What is your goal? They can't articulate what their goal is. They haven't taken the time. 
If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Get clear. Know exactly what it is that you're supposed to be doing so that when distractions come, and they will come, you will not be moved off the path that you're supposed to be on to get to your success. You'll be able to focus your action on one single path that will get you there quickly, quicker than ever, because you have clarity. Clarity, your clarity will bring your success to you a whole lot faster than if you were not clear. So number one, don't be too busy. Number two, get clear on what your goal is. And number three, and this is the most important, that's why I saved it for last. And even though I saved it for last, it really should be first. Seek God first. He is and should be the measuring stick and the shadow under which everything else falls. There's a decision that I made recently because I realized that I was out of alignment and my priorities kind of went like this. Business, family, self, ministry, and then God. God was last. In my mind, he wasn't last because in my mind, I told myself, I'm trying to get all this stuff done so I can get to God because God is so important. I'm trying to get all this other stuff out of the way so I can get to God. But it never worked out. I always ran out of time. And I realized that I had to shift my perspective. I had to let this mind be in me, which was also in Christ Jesus. I had to allow my mind to be renewed so that I could get into alignment, so that I could experience the harmony and the success that I really wanted in my life. God has to be first. What that looks like for me, I had to decide not to care. The Bible says, cast every care on him because he cares for you. I had to decide that I was not going to care about certain things as much as I did before. I am someone, I, I wouldn't call myself a worrier. Other people probably would. Um, it might be a little bit of anxiety, but I want to do the best I can to make sure that everything's okay. I want to do everything that I can. I want to give it 100% every area of my life. I want things to be okay and i do a lot of work to ensure that things are okay i'm usually the one that everything falls on because they know if i'm here i'm gonna figure it out and it's gonna be okay well that became a burden for me and it became an idol because i realized my addiction to being productive my addiction to being diligent and wanting to get things done caused me to put God last. I didn't even realize it because in my heart, I was like, he means so much to me. I just got to get all this stuff done. He understands. I made a decision. I had to be intentional about this, y'all. It's called going counter counterintuitive, not counterproductive, counterintuitive, which means whatever your natural intuition or your natural inclination is to do, deciding to do the opposite of that, just to see what happens. My natural inclination, when I first wake up is to immediately start attacking all my responsibilities. I have a lot of responsibilities, a mother of three children, a wife. I have two businesses. I have 12 employees and I also have a ministry. I have a lot of things on my plate and I felt like handling those things first makes me a good person. And it's, I'm someone who takes care of my responsibility. God understands that, right? No, I was so wrong because God was not first. And by first, he wasn't getting my time first. He was getting the time that I had left over. Everything was out of alignment. I couldn't seem to get things working in a way that wasn't stressful. It was just always stress, always anxiety. And I'm like, I really would say it all the time. There are not enough hours in the day for everything I have to do. I would say that. But the truth was, everything on my plate needed to fall under the shadow of God being the priority in my life. What God being the priority in my life looks like, when I wake up in the morning now, and this is now, this is what I'm experiencing now, the joy and the peace that I'm experiencing now. When I wake up in the morning now, God first. The goal is to 
talk to him first before I talk to anybody else. The goal is to hear from him first, to get in the word, to pray, to spend time in worship first. And I don't care how long it takes. Now I have on my schedule that, you know, it's about an hour and a half. But if it goes to two hours, it is what it is. This is what I mean about making a decision to not care. I don't care what my time with God affects. I don't care if me spending time with God means that I don't get to jump on a project that I wanted to get ahead of or wanted to work on. I don't care if me spending time with God means that I miss a phone call. I don't care if me spending time with God means that I don't get to make that big breakfast I wanted to make for my family. They can eat cereal. Nothing, making a decision that nothing is going to matter to me as much as God. I had to be intentional about that because there's so many responsibilities I have. I love my family. I love my children. I love my husband. I love my business. I love my work. I love myself, but I had to be intentional and when I did that, when I said, hey, time with God first, and after that, let the chips fall where they may. I used to make my schedule the night before or when, as soon as I woke up. But now, the first thing I'm doing, I'm praying, I'm reading, I'm spending time with God, crying, praying and worship, whatever I need to do until I feel like, okay, I can get up. After that, then, okay, how much time do I have left? Then I make my schedule based on the time I have left instead of doing it the other way around where I attack all of these responsibilities. Okay, how many minutes do I have left now for God? This is a decision that I made. I don't know how your day is set up or what putting God first would look like for you. That's what it looks like for me because I'm in charge of my schedule. I don't work for anybody else. I have the freedom to set my calendar up that way before it was set up to maximize productivity for my business because I'm an entrepreneur to the core. But you know what I am more than an entrepreneur? I'm a child of the king. I'm a child of God. I'm a kingdom citizen in God's kingdom. So that is my priority. That is my identity first. Before I'm black, before I'm a woman, before I'm a wife, before I'm a mother, before I'm an entrepreneur, before I'm an American, I'm a child of God. That is my identity. So. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of the things, all the other things that you are concerned about, the things you worry about, not like just, you know, buying a bunch of crazy stuff, but literally responsibilities. Those things will be taken care of under the shadow of God being on the throne. Listen, y'all, it's working for me. You know why? When you put God first, things that you would normally have to work like a dog to make happen, he can open a door just like that. I'm talking about 30 days of work in three minutes. He can make it happen. How? Because he's God. Everything for him is easy. That's the benefit. You putting God first, he's not going to let the rest of your life fall apart because you put him first. There's a benefit to putting God first. My energy is going into my relationship with God. Whatever's left, everybody else gets. And he fills in the missing pieces. And he makes my one step like 30 steps, like 100 steps. Only God can do that. Your best investment in your success is putting God first in your life. This is to the believers. If you're not a believer, you're on a different system, just keep grinding. You keep grinding. I promise you grinding will get you somewhere. But in this system, in the kingdom of God, if you are a believer, we're on a different system. We can't just grind. We can't put the grind ahead of our seek for God. There was a phrase my husband used to use called rise and grind. No, we're not in the rise and grind season. You don't just wake up and start working. You wake up and you seek, rise and seek, seek God. Because when you rise and grind, you really don't know what's ahead of you. God can see what's a hundred miles down the road. You can only see what's in front of you. And then when you see that, sometimes you're not seeing it right. How great would it be to be protected by God and to be led by God in such a way where he's like, listen, this is exactly what's going to happen tomorrow. So today I need you to do this. You don't get tips like that from anybody else. Nobody else knows. When we're out here grinding, we're trying to figure it out. We don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know what's around the corner. 
We don't know the motives of the people that we interact with. But in your time with God, in your prayer, in your worship, in your reading of the word, in putting God first, all of these doors start to open. It gives you keys to access wisdom that you wouldn't have had otherwise. Certain things you don't have to guess about. Every step you take is the right step instead of, oh, I thought that was it. Okay, now let's try something else. Cut all that out. Every shot you make is like a sniper. You're not like a Uzi just spraying bullets all over the place, hoping that you hit the target. It's more efficient to seek God first. Your one hour of productivity can yield results that it would take a year to get under the shadow of God being on the throne. Listen, y'all. I'm not playing about this. It works. I, <laughs> I'm not even going to tell you how long I've been doing it because uh, it's kind of a shame. But I have experienced already success, peace, alignment. Um, my children are, have been impacted by this decision in a positive way. My marriage. God cares about every part of your life. He wants success in every part of your life. But the fact of the matter is... He really just knows what's best. You don't know. You think you know, but you don't know what's best for you. He knows the plans that he has for you. They're plans to prosper you, to bring you to a great end, not to harm you. He knew it before he created you. He knows more about you than you know about yourself. There are things that you think you want, you really don't want, because you can want something today and then next week you don't want it anymore. He knows all of that. He knows you better than you know yourself. Why not do what's best for you? Why not make the most efficient, effective, dynamic decision that you can make for your life and for success? And that is seeking God first, putting him first, talking to him first. And last, I suggest, Spending time with him in the morning before you do anything else and then at night before you go to sleep. So you just have like a perfect God sandwich day. God on the top, God on the bottom, everything else in the middle. We'll figure it out and it's going to work out for your good. I hope this video was inspirational to you. I hope it taught you something and compels you to draw closer to God like never before. And I'll see you next time. Bye.